Chapter 10 of Virginia's Adventure Club. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Virginia's Adventure Club by Grace May North. Chapter 10 A New Goal. Virginia was alone in her room. It looked barren on the side, which had been occupied by Winona's bright blankets and reed baskets of quaint design. The Indian maiden had begged Virginia to permit her to leave her side of the room untouched, knowing how much the girl from the West enjoyed having about her the things that suggested the desert. But Verge had insisted that Winona would much more need them in the plain white-walled room in the hospital school. As Virginia glanced around, she was conscious of being more homesick than ever. But four months isn't an eternity, and I do live it here. She had just concluded when there came a tapping on her door. Betsy Clausen's merry face peeped in through the crack which she had opened. Are visitors wanted or diswanted? she inquired. We're improvising words tonight, Megsy, who closely followed, informed the lonely occupant. Yes, indeed, you're all wanted. Do come right in. I don't have to study just this minute, and it isn't well for me to be alone, for if I am along, I'm liable to do what my roommate did. What, Verge? You wouldn't pack up and go to a hospital, would you? Margaret looked alarmed. No. But I might pack up and go to the desert. Not to stay, but just to peep in and see what Brother and Uncle Tex are doing. They're sitting in front of the fireplace now, I suppose. And Rusty Pete, perhaps, is there talking over the work for tomorrow. And my brother, Peyton may have ridden over to VM to spend the night, Bab said. He wrote me that he often does that when he has business to attend to in Douglas. It would be too far to make the round trip in one day, and so he stops with Malcolm. While the girls were talking, there came a timid knock. Come in, was Virginia's hospitable invitation. The door opened, and Dickie Taylor stood on the threshold. Hello there, Dickie Bird. What's the big idea? Why not walk in? This from Betsy. I wasn't sure you wanted me. The girl entered and closed the door. You see, I don't belong to your little club group, and I don't want to intrude, but ever since I went over to the Burgess place with Mickey, I've had such an interest in that nice girl, and I hoped you would tell me what happened next. There was a little wistful expression in the eyes of the pretty young girl, and Virginia hastened to say, We haven't a club, really, Dickie. I mean, not one that shuts anyone out who wants to come in. I'm not at all sure, but that we might have asked you to meet with us Saturday evenings for our lesson reviews, that being our main object, only we thought that you belonged to the Corridor Troop, and that its activities and your lemonade teas took all of your free time. It's a curious thing. Dickie had seated herself at Virgis' invitation, and she spoke with unwanted seriousness. I can't understand it myself. Last year... I was perfectly contented with the nonsense and pranks that the twins are always thinking of. But this year I feel, well, I don't know as I can express it. I'll say sort of dissatisfied, as though I were mentally hungry. Oh, I don't know exactly what I do mean, but I feel it. A restlessness that the corridor troop and the teas do not seem to satisfy. And it just came to me recently that the something I want, you girls have. Even Babs is doing lots different this year. She seems to have a definite aim. Virginia looked up brightly. That's it, dear. That is the whole secret of content, I do believe. Having a definite aim and every day making some progress, however little, toward it. Then, with a glance about at all of them, you want to know just what happened to change Winona's plans, so I will tell you. When the little tale had been told, Virginia said with a queer little smile, Shall I tell you my new goal? Or rather, the only one which I have definitely formed. Oh, yes, please do. It was little Sally who spoke. She had never even thought that a goal in life was necessary. She nestled a bit nearer to the speaker and listened with her baby blue eyes intently watching. Then, Virginia told of the little deserted schoolhouse. It must be very lonely for it's many a year since its door was closed and locked for the last time. I suppose it has stood there 
through the long sunny days and the long windy or rainy days, wondering why the eight laughing happy little children never came again, and the rickety shed back of it wonders, perhaps, why eight little burrows are no longer tied in its shelter. I remember that little drifted in schoolhouse verge, Margaret said softly. I rode by there alone one day, and I dimly recall having thought that it must be lonesome, though I haven't the imagination that you have, and, oh, I do think it is just wonderful of you to want to give some of your free time to teaching those babies. Maybe I will be able to help, that is, if I am there. If you are there, Virginia's tone held a surprised query. Dear adopted sister of mine, where else would you be but with us on VM? Don't you know that my brother Malcolm is your guardian and that our home is always to be your home? That is, if you want to go back with me? Of course you will soon be free to choose your own way of living. Perhaps you'd rather stay in the East? Oh, no indeed. I want more than words can tell to go back home with you and to live forever with my sister Virginia and my brother Malcolm, if they want me. Then, with a little laugh, she turned eyes in which there were tears to look at the listening group. Girls, forgive me, please. I know I'm depressing everybody. I was just feeling so sort of useless and all alone. Oh, you're useful enough, Megsy. Cut out worrying about that, Barbara retorted gaily. Didn't you sew seven buttons on undergarments for me, just in time to save me from being pounced on by Miss Snoopins? And didn't she happen around five minutes after you had put up your needle to examine my work basket? Miss Barbara, she remarked, and her voice was almost human. This is the first time I have ever found your undergarments neatly mended. Honestly, I thought by her manner that she was disappointed. So, don't ever say you aren't useful, Margaret Sullivan. What I want to know, Betsy put in irrelevantly, is when Eleanor Burgess is going to honor the seminary with her presence and with whom she is going to room. End of chapter 10 A New Goal